What's up guys, Sean here, and today we're going to talk about Jank Uger trying to rewrite his own personal history when it comes to his coverage of the Russiagate story. <laughs> As many of you already know, Robert Mueller concluded his investigation into whether or not the Trump campaign colluded with the Russian government to steal the election from Hillary Clinton in 2016. He submitted his report, and we have the initial findings of the report, and it turns out that Hillary Clinton lost the election. Now, I'm not surprised by this conclusion. I don't think most of you in the audience are surprised by this conclusion. In fact, it seems like the only people who are surprised by this conclusion are people who work at CNN, MSNBC vote Democrat, and Hollywood liberals. In fact, the Democrats have been so crazy about this Russia thing that I wouldn't be surprised if by the time I'm editing this video, I find a bunch of articles about how Robert Mueller is in fact a Russian asset, how Robert Mueller is now public enemy number one, and how Robert Mueller betrayed the country by not showing how Donald Trump betrayed the country. This Russia conspiracy passed the threshold for reasonable conversation a long time ago, so don't be surprised by that. I mean, if you really think about it, this whole Russia thing never made any sense to begin with in the first place. If you were the Russian government and you wanted to capture a candidate and then run them for the presidency, why would you capture the candidate that wasn't even likely to run, let alone win the Republican primary, let alone win the general election? I know there are a lot of overly convoluted political conspiracy movies and shows out there, but Donald Trump legitimately, on paper, would have been one of the least valuable people for the Russians to have as an asset and then run for presidency because nobody thought he was gonna win. Now, while Russiagate was ridiculous and absurd on its face, that didn't stop the people in the mainstream media from jumping on that grenade as fast as humanly possible. Just watch this video of Rachel Maddow, who basically has turned her entire show into an Alex Jones-like conspiracy theory broadcast of Russiagate, almost crying now that it has been shown that Russiagate didn't happen and Donald Trump didn't betray the country. Our, our, our job tonight um, as a country, sort of, or at least what everybody in the country is going to be doing tonight, is, is trying to figure out what it means that the report of special counsel Robert Mueller has finally been submitted. Whether we figure this thing out as a country, <laughs> whether we, the country, are ever fully told what Robert Mueller really figured out about Russia messing with our election to try to elect Donald Trump president and whether Trump and his campaign were in. Right, there has never before been a president. Or, I mean, there's never been a high, not since the 1700s has there been a high ranking government official who was, who was, who was investigated for potentially being in the thrall of a foreign power. It certainly never happened to a president. Are we going to find out what Robert Mueller found out when he investigated that core issue. Now, some of you might feel sympathetic because you're watching a woman almost crying as her world's being shattered, but need I remind you that this woman dedicated her entire show for the last two years to a false Russia conspiracy theory, and she's crying over the fact that the president didn't betray the country. Now, it wasn't just Rachel Maddow who had her world shattered, it was also Don Lemon over at CNN, which, by the way, you could take any clip from any segment on CNN and you would swear by the look on the anchor's face that somebody came in and shot a puppy and then told them to go on air right after. They look so somber. They look like they just came from a funeral. It's absolutely amazing. So let's bear in mind what we got today is a summary of Robert Mueller's findings. It is not the entire report. And what we have learned Quite frankly, it raises a lot of new questions as we move forward. One of the biggest questions tonight, why did Robert Mueller not come to a conclusion on obstruction himself? So make no mistake, this is a good thing that Mueller found no collusion with Russia by Trump or his campaign. That is a very good thing for the country. But the fact remains, Russians did interfere in our election. Look how sad and obviously hurt Don Lemon is that President Trump, again, did not betray America. Now, to be 100% fair, there were people on the left and in left-wing media who did not buy into the Russia conspiracy. Jimmy Dore, who I've been very critical of in the past, never bought into the Russia conspiracy, and he shamed people on the left for reporting this story over and over again and not focusing on policy because he knew that it was just a scare against the Russians and it was meant to promote a pro-war agenda. 
Kyle Kalinske also comes to mind as somebody who did not buy into the Russia conspiracy hoax. So credit where credit is due. However, one of the people that are claiming that they never bought into the Russia hoax is Jank Huger. However, that is not the case. The Young Turks recently put out a video entitled Jank Destroys His Critics, which is a video where Jank explains how he never really bought into the Russia conspiracy theory. And he showed clips all from last month of him hedging his bets on Russia. Dean C. Bradshaw writes in with an angry tweet, which is always fun. You F words have been yelling tick, 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 tick for two effing years now. Just come out and admit it, we were wrong. No deal, I will not admit that. In fact, I'll show you how right I was. Yeah. You say there's no collusion in the election. Okay, that's true, right? Mm -hmm. And to the degree that we covered that, uh, and we minimize the throughout, you're gonna see it with your own eyes, okay? Uh, Okay, then I would say yes, then we would be wrong about that part. Now, unfortunately for Cenk Uyghur, he's not going to get away with rewriting history because I happen to have a very special power, and that power is remembering things that happened before the month of February. One of the crimes uh, that would be alleged is not collusion, that's not an actual term used in, in legalese. One of the crimes would be conspiracy, but it appears that there there is not a conspiracy that has come to fruition here. But it looks like based on the information we have now, I would conclude that it, I don't believe the conspiracy came to a fruition. Yeah. But, it, but it's possible that they did all of that, but fell short of actually conspiring with the Trump campaign. In a way that is clear and provable. Yes, hmm. so I need you to brace for impact on that possibility. Up. Oh, so there you have it. You have a video of Cenk Uyghur from February saying that they're probably not gonna get Trump on Russia collusion and they should be focusing on collusion after the election and collusion before the election, but not during the campaign before that. Now, before I shatter the narrative that Jank is trying to force feed his audience and the world, I do wanna point out that TYT wasn't the worst when it came to covering the Russia story. And they did often say that there were extra crimes like money laundering, money laundering specifically for the Russians, that the Mueller investigation and other investigations should focus on and should look into. However, that's also nonsensical. And the idea that they weren't pushing collusion during the election is a complete and total lie. So let me just take care of the money laundering thing right quick so you guys don't have to worry about it. Essentially what money laundering is, is people trying to change the origin of illegitimate money to make it seem legitimate. So you'll have drug dealers or some other form of criminals funneling their money through a legitimate business or what looks like a legitimate business so that on paper, it looks like the money was made legally. There's also another aspect to this where people try to shield their money from taxation by putting their money into low tax or no tax assets. And where this possibly connects to Trump is that one of those assets is real estate, specifically New York real estate, but other real estate throughout the country can also be used and other real estate in other countries can also be used. In fact, I saw an article not too long ago, I'll put it up on screen, that basically said that 30% of condos in Manhattan are purchased by foreign investors, which may or may not be a form of money laundering or shielding your money from taxation. And where this connects to Trump is that Trump sells real estate. He works in the real estate industry. So it's not so much that Donald Trump is laundering money, it's that other people are buying real estate from Donald Trump as a way to shield their money from taxation and other things like that. Now look, that gets a little more complicated before you go into it, but I just want you to know when you hear that, that what they're saying might not actually be accurate. And one of the ways that you know that is that Paul Manafort, Trump's campaign manager, was actually indicted on money laundering charges. So it wasn't like Robert Mueller wasn't looking for ancillary crimes or wasn't referring ancillary crimes for prosecution to other district attorneys. And are they demagoguing Russia because it's easier? Yes, so I agree with you on that. Um, and is the Democratic Party using a Russia meddling in the elections as an excuse for their loss to Donald Trump? Yes. Now, I, I will say that I think that Russia is a quote unquote big deal because um, I believe that Trump did far worse than helping the Russians meddle in our elections, I believe that he did money laundering. And I think uh, that he owes the Russians and, and is paying them back 
And I think it is a, a wildly dangerous situation for our democracy. So of all the clips that Cenk Uygur showed, this one is my absolute favorite because it comes from an interview on February 8th that Cenk did with Kyle Kalinske. And Kyle Kalinske, you might remember from earlier in this video, is somebody that I mentioned who did not buy into the Russia Gate conspiracy. Now, if you watch that interview, which is about an hour long and it will be linked in the description box down below, you'll find that the entire basis of that interview is that Jenk and Kyle essentially agree on everything, except Jenk thinks that Trump colluded with Russia during the election and Kyle doesn't. For Jenk to isolate a clip from that interview where he's arguing in favor of Trump colluding with Russia during the election and pretend that that's a clip of him not doing so is absolutely ridiculous. Now, if you want to give Cenk all the credit in the world, be more charitable to him than he's ever been to anybody on the opposition ever, and say that technically he probably was more skeptical in that clip than your average reporter, then I'm going to drop this clip on you. That is what it is. But Cohen and Flynn have already both flipped. So if that was a deal, hey, you lift the Russian sanctions for what we did during the election, if, well, the prosecutors already know it. And Trump knows that they know it because Cohen knows it. So that's why he's like, no, I mean, I mean, I mean, if I did collude, is that really a crime? I mean, punching someone is not a crime. Assault is a crime, not punching. No, dude, it's just a different word. It's the same crime, mm -hmm. right? So he's in a cold sweat panic because he did it. Hey, you lift the Russian sanctions for what we did during the election. He's in a cold sweat panic because he did it. Yep. That's Cenk Uygur plain as day looking directly into the camera saying Trump is angry about the Mueller investigation because he did do the collusion. But let's turn the dial a little further back in that clip where Cenk argues that Cohen flipping on Trump means that Cohen will testify that he knew for sure that Trump colluded with Russia and that Trump knew about the Trump Tower meeting. Remember, Michael Cohen has turned on Trump and Michael Cohen is telling everyone in the media Homeboy knew about that meeting with the Russians. No, no, you guys don't know why it's so bad. And, and it's obvious from Trump's panic and his changed yeah. talking point that, it, well, if there was collusion, it's not a big deal, is because he knows Cohen's got the goods. So I'll give you one example, but you can, like, it's all in the public record. There's dozens of examples. But in early 2017, New York Times had an article about how uh, there was a secret proposal given to a Trump ad administration official early in his, can in his administration to lift the Russian sanctions. It was in a sealed envelope. Do you know who it went to? It went to Michael Flynn. Do you know who gave it to him? Michael Cohen and Felix Sater. Felix Sater is a well-known criminal that Donald Trump has worked with in the past. Mm -hmm. In fact, he had a card from the Trump organization. Now, Sater it works with the Russians. Okay, so. That is what it is, but Cohen and Flynn have already both flipped. So if that was a deal, hey, you lift the Russian sanctions for what we did during the election, if, well, the prosecutors already know it and Trump knows that they know it. Now, of course, that was not the case. Cohen did not testify to that. In fact, Cohen testified that he had no evidence that Donald Trump was in communication or was colluding with the Russians. And just for good measure, how about a clip of Cenk Uygur saying that Donald Trump is definitely going to fire Mueller in order to suppress the investigation? I don't know what's going to happen in this country, but that disaster is looming. I mean, Trump is tweeting like a sweaty tooth madman again. Like, me with the all caps, it's a witch hunt, it's a hoax. Why do you think he's doing that? Because he's not nervous? No, he knows what he did. He knows Michael's right, that he's a... A crook, he's always been a crook, and and they got him, and he knows they got him. That's why he's got hatchet men like Whitaker in. And uh, and so if you think he's not gonna do something crazy to try to go after Mueller and end the investigation, you don't know Donald Trump at all. This was a major component of the Trump-Russia conspiracy that he was gonna fire Mueller to stop the investigation from exposing the conspiracy. That didn't happen. Surprise, surprise, Jank reported it like it was going to happen. He fear-mongered based on this. And again, these are not isolated incidents. Go into TYT's channel, search Mueller, search Trump, search collusion, search all of them together, and you'll find video after video with titles like Proof Trump Colluded with Russia. So yeah, Jank was not careful in reporting the Russia collusion story. He pushed this narrative. The fact that in the 11th hour, after 21 months of pushing the Russia collusion hoax, Jank decided to hedge his bets 
does not mean he was right all along. Don't let him rewrite history over this. So uh, for all the people on social media saying, hey, Cenk made it up after the Mueller report came out uh, that he thought it was really the collusion before and after the election and not during the election. I guess you were 100% wrong because there I am a month before any of that comes out saying exactly that. Hey, you lift the Russian sanctions for what we did during the election. He's in a cold sweat panic because he did it. He pushed this story like many in the left wing media because the story served their political interests. And now that it's blown up in his face, he's trying to back away slowly out of the room and disappear into the bushes. You're not fooling anybody, dude. You lied constantly, you pushed this nonsense, you bought into this nonsense, you sold this nonsense to your audience, and you should be held accountable for that. I'm willing to give all the credit in the world to people on the left who did not push this narrative. Jimmy Dore and Kyle Kalinske did an excellent job covering this, especially Kyle Kalinske, because Kyle actually pointed out time after time where Trump was more hawkish toward Russia than Obama was. But Jenk gets none of that credit. And in fact, he should be criticized extra because he pushed these lies and now he's lying about his past lying. Anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. Let me know what you think about Jenk Uger's pathetic attempts to rewrite history in the comments down below. And let me know if you think this is going to be the tactic that other people who push this narrative are gonna use going forward. If you like this video, then please show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. Follow me on my social medias, including Twitter. You can support me via one-time donations on PayPal or monthly through Subscribestar or Patreon. This has been me shutting down Jenks nonsense. Till next time.